Stuart Diver understands grief. He was the sole survivor of the 1997 Threadbow landslide, which killed 18 people. One of the 18 people who died was his wife, Sally, who died in his arms as they lay trapped together under the rubble of their collapsed uh, ski lodge for 60 hours. In the years that followed, Stuart waded through the grief of losing both his wife and so many of their friends, oh so suddenly. And the work Stuart did in counselling prepared him well for when, many years later, his second wife, Rosanna, was di diagnosed with cancer. He knew then what they needed to do. Together, he and Rosanna banked up memories. They made the most of every opportunity they had to go on holidays, to have beautiful meals, to see beautiful places, to create and hold onto memories which, which Stuart could hang on to after Rosanna was gone. So they had photos and souvenirs, even things like a, the cork from a bottle of wine they drank in a beautiful restaurant together. Stuart could treasure all these memories which they very deliberately created using the opportunity that a cancer diagnosis gives for at least some more time together. And beyond banking those memories, Rosanna also wanted to give things to their then four-year-old daughter, Alessia, who would not understand what it meant that her mother had died. So Rosanna did things like get, uh, bought gifts and wrote a birthday card for Alessia for every year until she turned 18. She created a cookbook of favorite recipes that she would love to have taught Alessia, but would not, there, would not be there to just share with her. And all these gifts and cards were kept in a, big, in a big chest in the living room of Stuart and then Alessia's house. And that lovely idea of both banking up memories and creating gifts to be given after the person had died, I think gives us an, a bit of a lens which we can understand what Jesus was doing at the night of his Last Supper. He too had a prognosis that he knew his death was imminent. He knew he was in a place where his enemies who had power were working against him, and he knew that his time was drawing near. So at that Last Supper, Jesus also wanted to bank up memories with his disciples and to give them something that would last beyond when he was gone. And so Jesus gave his disciples two powerful, two powerful actions which they would bank up and hold on to. First, the washing of their feet, and secondly, the Eucharist itself. Jesus knelt down and washed his disciples' feet in an incredibly countercultural, provocative action. It was so, so provocative that Peter, at first, didn't want to have his feet washed. It was such a, an upending of the natural order in which a, a, a rabbi, a master like Jesus, was, was meant to be served by his disciples rather than the other way around. But Jesus, who had said many times that he came not to be served but to serve, now modeled that action in an incredible, in incredible way of kneeling down, washing his disciples' dirty, dusty, um, um, uh, 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 dirt encrusted feet. Jesus did this a very deliberate action of service, of, service of, of manual service, and of putting himself beneath and lower that of his disciples, putting their needs beyond his own. And then he said, what I have done for you, you must now do for others. And then they moved to the table, the table which they had shared many times before because Jesus often shared meals with his disciples. But this time he took it a step further, where he took the bread and said, this bread, this is my body which will be broken for you. He took the wine and said, this wine is my blood which will be poured out for you, which must have made no sense to the disciples that night like four-year-old Alessia not understanding her mother dying, the disciples could not have understood what Jesus meant that night either. But the next day, when they saw Jesus' body broken on the cross, when they saw his blood pouring out of the holes in his hands and feet, then they might have understood what Jesus had done for them the night before. Jesus gave them two powerful memories for them to hold on to and bank up and take with them. But then beyond just creating a memory which they could draw on from the past, Jesus also wanted to give himself to his disciples in a way that, they could, that, they could be, that he could be alive to them in the future. When he said to them at the end of the meal, do this in memory of me. Jesus invited, he commanded his disciples to, to have that meal, that supper, again and again. And in doing so, the disciples discovered that Jesus was present to them in and through the bread and the wine in a way that must have been so palpable for them 
that must have sensed, wow, when we do this, it's like Jesus with us again. Because there was no, nothing written down to say they had to. There was no church rule to say, thou shalt go to Mass on Sunday. No, the, the very fact that the, the Eucharist continued says it must have been effective. The disciples who had nothing else to go on other than remembering what Jesus said to do, went ahead and had a meal of bread and wine together after Jesus had risen from the dead and then ascended to heaven. When they came together in Eucharist, they experienced Jesus alive and with them, just as he had been before. And so they passed on, as we hear in the second reading at uh, the, the Lord's Supper Mass. St. Paul's words are saying, I hand on to you what I have received myself. I hand on to you this tradition of the Lord's Supper, which comes all the way down to us today. And so we too have a treasure chest, just like Alessia has a chest full of, of birthday cards and gifts which she can delve into and receive from her long-departed mother. We have a treasure chest in the sacraments of the church, particularly Eucharist, that we, we can receive Jesus who died on the cross long ago and who rose again and ascended to heaven. We can receive him, his presence here with us. This is what Jesus was doing on the night of that Last Supper, setting up both memories and a tradition moving forward by which we can, can, we can experience here and now Jesus as present with us as he was with his disciples on that night of the Last Supper, as he was on that Good Friday on the day he died and sacrificed for us, and as he was on that Easter Sunday morning, alive and risen again from the tomb. He is with us, and tonight we remember.